Hi, I'm Cliff Fawcett. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're out on the Little Miami River in uh, a spot that I like to go quite a bit. Water level's up today. It's a beautiful day. It's like 70 degrees. It's early in the morning about, I mean early, it's like nine. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, I make canoeing and kayaking videos, quick tip videos, how-to videos, and some bite-sized adventures where you can just sit back, relax, and pretend you're on the water with me. Today we're going to talk about the difference between canoes and kayaks. And I need to give you my personal history to kind of help you understand where I'm coming from. About 20 years ago, my kids were little. I really took a fancy to paddling. I grew up around water. I grew up on the Chesapeake Bay. And I wanted to get a kayak or a canoe. I wasn't sure which. And I took the advice of a friend who said, hey, if you're looking at a canoe or a kayak, what you ought to do is go to a demo day. At the time, we lived in Wilmington, Delaware, and uh, there was a, a kayak shop nearby that had a demo day at the local uh, Lums Pond Lake. And uh, my wife and I went out there with our two little boys at that time. We have three kids now, but at the time we had two boys, and we went to demo. And so we piled in a canoe and paddled, felt a little tippy. Like a lot of people, we thought uh, a tandem ca a kayak would be a great idea. It turned out not to be, but anyway, we thought it would be a good idea. So we tried the tandem kayak. It was a uh, Old Town Loon 160T. We called it the Green Bean. We fell in love with it right away. It was so stable. Uh, the boys could sit on the floor uh, between the two seats and everybody was kind of low down and it was not very tippy and we bought it. Uh, had that boat for a number of years, loved it. But uh, that's my background. So I started with a kayak then. Uh, we bought a, a 138. It's nice, very stable, uh, big open cockpit, room for an extra kid. That's when we had our daughter, <laughs> Maddie. Uh, she could ride in the front with me and uh, Patty would go with the two boys in the, the green bean. We had those for a number of years. Uh, we ended up getting a, uh, an otter uh, for the kids when they were old enough to paddle their own boat. It's a small little uh, old town uh, uh, recreational kayak. Um, and that was really fun. I started going to uh, canoeing and kayaking symposia. I went to the Jersey Paddler Show. They had it every year in uh, northern New Jersey. And we lived in New Jersey by that time. And then uh, started to learn about the uh, the differences between canoes and kayaks. You know, our experience was very limited. One day at a demo and, you know, we made our choice. Then I started going, we moved to Ohio. I started going to Canoe Copia in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Hello, Darren Bush, if you're watching this. <laughs> Great show they put on up there. A uh, place called Rutabaga Paddle Sports. Um, huge show. Tons of talks, love it. Started getting really intrigued about uh, canoeing. I had a friend who uh, had an old uh, canoe and we bought it. And uh, it was fun as a, a regular you know, tandem, about 15, 16 feet. Uh, enjoyed it, it's really fun, we still have it. Uh, it was a Galleons Woodsman 3. And uh, that leads us up to uh, a couple of uh, sea kayaks we bought. Uh, that actually goes back. Uh, we bought the sea kayaks uh, in uh, New Jersey when we lived there because we used to go, we well, still do, we, uh, we go to Chincoteague, uh, Virginia every year and there's some open water there and uh, sea kayaks are definitely better uh, for that environment. So let's talk about canoes and kayaks. Canoes are really good for carrying stuff. Uh, they, they usually can carry quite a bit of uh, gear. They're a lot easier to portage. So if you're going lake to lake or from a river to a lake, a uh, lake to a river, I mean, portaging with a canoe is so much easier. Kayaks are heavy um, 
and the the space that they have is kind of tucked away in these hatches and stuff uh, which is what makes kayaks great kayaks are great on open water uh, where you have uh, a varying degree of water conditions uh, surf um, you know, wind, that kind of stuff. Uh, they have a protected deck. Uh, they have bulkheads uh, front and back that keep the, the kayak from filling up with water. It also keeps your stuff dry. And then usually uh, you'll wear a, uh, a skirt to keep the water from going in the cockpit where you're sitting. And you can roll a kayak, which means if you get tipped over, you can tip yourself back up without even getting out. And so that's definitely an advantage. If you tip over in a canoe, you're gonna have to get out, get all your stuff. If it's not tied down, put it back in. So those are the basic differences. I think in this day and age with uh, so many options in paddle sports, I mean, I, I don't consider myself anymore like a, a, a canoeist or a kayaker. I kind of consider myself a paddler. Um, I like to paddle and whether that be in a canoe or a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard. Um, I don't know if there's other things. If there are, I'd paddle them. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of different choices and they've definitely morphed from uh, the traditional forms and there's a lot of variety and you know just like when you're buying a bicycle you know you think about you want to buy a bike for where you're going to be riding if you're going to be riding on the road get a road bike if you're going to be riding in the woods get a mountain bike um, <clears throat> but it's not that simple right uh, when we buy cars you can just look at the American automobile market Ford Motor Company as an example has no passenger cars now because everyone wants either a SUV or a pickup truck. And is that because they go off road? No, <laughs> it's appealing. Just like a mountain bike is appealing. I bought a mountain bike back in the day, even though I pretty much never rode off road because I like the styling of it. I want to buy a Jeep because I think they're cool, but I don't really plan on going off road. <laughs> and so I bought a kayak because I thought they were cool. And as I already said to you, I bought it because it was more stable with our little kids. Um, I think if you go back to the original form, and I always think of Cliff Jacobson when I think of this, you know, uh, think about when they were invented, who they were invented by, and what they were invented for. So if you think about kayaks, most people go back to the Inuits, First Nations, people who were on open water and they used them for hunting, hunting whales, hunting seals, and uh, they were open water vessels uh, and they had a specific purpose. You think about canoeing. I don't know if this is true. If you're from uh, Europe and you know different, please tell me. But from what I've heard, canoes were invented by the uh, Native Americans, the indigenous peoples of North America, and they were transportation devices that were used on inland waterways and rivers and lakes and transportation, um, carrying things. And so if you look at those things, yeah, you go back and say, yeah, a kayak is for open water, uh, seaworthiness, um, and a canoe is for transportation on inland waters. Now, what do I want to buy? Well, here I am in Ohio on the Little Miami. It's still as can be. <laughs> I could really paddle any kind of paddle sport vessel here. I could paddle a stand-up paddle board, no problem. I'm going up river now, by the way. You see how easy it is? So, you know, I don't need some special craft. I could use a kayak. I could use a sea kayak. I could use a whitewater kayak, although I don't know why I would here. Um, but it would be nice to have if there was a white water. I could use a sit on top. So really think about what you want to do. Um, personally, when I buy stuff, I like to buy stuff that's versatile. I like to buy stuff that I can use 
in a number of different environments. Kind of like good at a lot of things, but not great. Uh, because I can't buy a special boat for every situation. <laughs> you know, when it comes to buying a car, um, I like Hondas. Why do I buy Hondas? I buy Hondas because they're good at pretty much everything. They're not great at anything. It's not the fastest car. It's not the most fuel efficient car. It's not uh, the stylish, you know, Ferrari kind of car. But it's kind of good at everything. And uh, so same thing with a boat. So when you're buying a kayak or a canoe, think about where you're going to use it. Um, if you're going to go to the Boundary Waters and go from lake to lake and portage, you want a canoe. You really do. That's going to be best for you. If you want to paddle on a river uh, with a friend, uh, a tandem canoe would be great. If you want to paddle on a river by yourself, a solo canoe like this, North Wind Solo, would be great. If you saw my recent video, I, I uh, turned around because I ran into a, a tree that was down and I was in a sea kayak and it was like, it was so hard for me to get in and out of it. I didn't want to get stuck up against that tree, um, not being able to get in and out easy. But, you know, with this canoe, I could get out really easy. I could have dragged the canoe right around the tree on the ground and uh, gotten back in. For those of you who are interested, I uh, took out my kneeling drops this morning and I put reg the regular drops back in. Uh, just to uh, get a little comparison, uh, I forgot how stable this canoe felt with the lower seat. And it's, you know, it's really about three or four inches lower down, but it uh, feels a lot less tippy. <laughs> uh, one of you in the comments uh, suggested that I take a freestyle class, and uh, I took that advice to heart. I uh, found a freestyling class, which is going to be, I think it's called the Midwest uh, Canoe Symposium. It's going to be up in the Akron, Ohio area. I think it's in September. So I'm going to be taking that class. Uh, I don't know if I'll video. Um, I don't know if they'll let me video. But also, I kind of want to focus on what I'm doing and not focus on filming. So I may just uh, give you a report afterwards. I'm hoping to learn uh, some skills uh, where I can like learn how to heel the canoe over and feel comfortable with it. Uh, turn a little bit better, uh, learn some stuff on kneeling, um, and just some of those freestyle techniques. So I can't remember who that was. I'll give you a shout out on the screen right here. Thanks for your comment. Thanks for your suggestion. I took your advice. <laughs> That's the great thing about YouTube. I love it. You build a community around your channel. Uh, people comment. Uh, it's great to see the comments, the things that people say and uh, interact. Uh, you know, people who have uh, similar interests as me in uh, kayaking and canoeing. So if you haven't commented, please do. It's super fun for me and um, I like to see what people are thinking and also I can respond uh, in the next video uh, to the things that uh, come up. So whether you decide to get a canoe or a kayak or a paddleboard or a sit on top, whatever you decide, I would say first get out and try it. And uh, that's the best way to know whether you're going to like it or not. And if you buy it, use the thing. And always wear a PFD when you're on the river. Always, always, always. And uh, if you can afford all the boats, I would say go for it. Because as Jerry Vandiver says, there's no such thing as too many boats. And that's true. Peace out.